Hi, my name is Zoe Milk. We're at my studio in Los Angeles as I'm preparing for my solo show, Inflorescence, at Corey Helford Gallery. This show is titled Inflorescence. In this exhibition, I'm presenting the show as a whole. It's an allegory to all meanings of the word. My theme has been very consistent ever since I started painting because I just paint what I want to paint and then the meaning gets into it while I'm painting. So if you call it a theme, like I just have to say that's my life. My process usually starts from a really tiny scribble. Most of the times I'm thinking about something and it comes to life on a piece of napkin. And, or sometimes I have a specific image I put my mind to. If I'm in the kitchen, it would be on a little recipe book. It would be on some random piece of paper that I can find, which I can log the thought. So it's not very, sit down, this is the artist's table, this is the drawing table, I'm gonna be really serious about this. I don't really work like that. I work from what I experience at that moment. And if I can log it, I will log it. Medicine is a piece, it, it rests on the idea of finding a still moment for yourself along with believing your intuition. When I take a moment for myself, I believe I benefit from the powers of self-examination. You can't always talk your mind out to a human being and expect remedy. The thing that I was really looking for when I was shooting Brie was I wanted her to look like she was really comfortable. But, you know, like she was, she was sitting and I was in the shower then that, <laughs> that morning I was in the shower and the water was really hot and you know that moment when you turn the water not from like from hot to like perfect and that that weird um, chills you get and I was talking to her about that like think about that think about that moment because it's not just about being comfortable physically it's the feeling it's the blood rushing to the right areas of her body and I think I really wanted to get that feeling in this painting all these metaphors. Um, one of my favorite metaphors to use in all of my pieces are colored chords. I've gotten a lot of people asking me about what they mean. Um, they're really, they really re represent a lot of force, whether it's someone's opinion towards you, whether it's something that you learn today. Everything that happens in your life, I like to use that as a allegory where in this painting's case, she's decorated with them. And she's also sitting on the chaos of color, along with the chaos of color behind her. And she's seeing these almost shard-like clear visions amidst of all that chaos. And I wanted to make sure that the chords of color were not strangling her. They're actually dressing her up. So I wanted to talk about the piece as me, myself, being medicine to myself because I can't keep asking other people to heal me. And those experiences, those forces of chords of color, if you use it the right way, it can really hurt me or it could aid me in a lot of ways. I think it really has to do with the way I want to take on from what my experiences are. Since it starts with drawing, I happen to become a person that loves drawing. It really begins everything for me because drawing is seeing into the space and it's your eyes touching around the body or whatever you're drawing and it's really feeling the air. I really believe it's the word seeking in its most powerful way. Panicle Mist, yes, this drawing, it has two versions. One is a drawing and one is a painting. And I think both pieces hold pretty similar meanings in my heart. This one, I was thinking a lot about the shyness of myself. And I think when I meet someone, I try to be a chameleon. I want to make sure that they're comfortable. But at the end of the day, I end up draining myself because I'm not really behaving as I would if I was alone. Some, some introverts actually gain energy when they're at a party talking to people, even if they're introverted. So I was really wondering what is wrong with me? Where, where do I fall into in this um, categories of people? And I still don't know where I am, but 
It's the way I perceive myself when I meet someone new. I try to make sure that I communicate with them. I want to remember them as an experience. So when I am presenting myself to somebody I meet for the first time, I'm very careful because I don't want to be remembered as a person that I don't want to be remembered as. And this piece is very shy. Like I really covered up Leah in many pieces of clothing, trying to recreate that look of somebody wanting, interested, but also not very sure. And Panicle Mist, the painting, um, it's Panicle Mist Blue and Mauve, it holds the exact same flavors. Um, I, I, I didn't want to try to change it a little bit, even a little bit. And I guess this is a very good example of a drawing becoming a painting and staying exactly true to my initial thoughts. And I think in this case, I was able to add more to it by giving her more emotion because I felt that the purple is always the gloomy color and then the chick yellow is a very light fluffy color. So there's all these different emotions inside me and I'm covered in them and I'm really trying to see which is the best to wear for this day, for this moment. And it's a contemplation, but at the end of the day, what is right and what is wrong? And by me painting this and me drawing the, uh, putting the drawing together, I think the more I think about, it is one thing that really I shouldn't be thinking about because that is one of the toxic thoughts that I think about. So I think by me talking about this right now, I am, definitely seeing the circle that I'm creating. I am definitely going from one painting to the other. I am frustrated in this piece. I am frustrated doing that drawing and then I get healed by painting on something that I have different thoughts related to it. So I guess the inflorescence as a show is a really huge healing process for myself and where it takes me, I don't know yet, but um, I just know that I I have gained a lot by communicating and reminiscing in my life experiences and trying to relate to someone else's, whether that's happy or sad. My work serves as these markers, I mean, obviously for personal reasons, but it creates a giant timeline for me. And I really find comfort in looking at the image because every single thing um, may not have a meaning as in symbolism, but every single thing was done with some kind of thought in the back of my head. My subject matter comes from nothing but love. You do find people who are extra special in your life and the fact that I can actually immortalize them and I'm really happy with the fact that I can and I hope they are too because I never want to give them something that they don't want to deal with and I hope I hope it's not that way. Um, but there are pieces sometimes that I just use myself as the model. Most of the times it happens not because I'm full of myself. It happens because I have an idea. I really want to get to it. I, I want to get to it right now and I can't get a model. I can't get a friend to come over for a, a little chat session. So I'll take pictures of myself and that creates the work from there. In fluorescence, is one of the largest paintings of the exhibition. Um, and it embodies the relationship with simple experiences affecting my being almost in a chain reaction. Everything that I live through, directly or indirectly, pass by, um, breathe to take in, they all are chords of forces, again, <laughs> that penetrate me starting from the weakest part of my being because I feel the hit from the weakest, the most vulnerable area that I need help with. And I may be fine the day before, but then if today I'm not feeling a certain way about, for example, the way I communicate with my parents, something that has nothing to do with me and my parents' relationship can actually deteriorate my thoughts because I feel guilty. And I think a lot of times I deal with that because I'm alone, because I'm painting. But I, I try to heal myself, I try to take myself out of that area. But you know, the piece, the painting, um, it represents also thankfulness 
for being able to recognize that. And in the middle of trying to survive my own toxic thoughts, I am admitting my own evils and the awareness of my soul just bracing to be. Because the piece is colorful, I wanted it to sort of get away from the heaviness of what I was really thinking about. But the colorful and the floral parts of it can be a huge part of someone's life and I think at the time when I was painting it my life was very rich and very full but I wasn't in the best mental health really so when you look at her she's wearing a body harness on her head and I wanted to talk about through putting the harness on my subject's head I wanted to maybe get a little closer to how she, cloudy I am up, up here and not really being able to think the way I want to think because I am inspired in a bad way from the way I'm perceiving things. All of the girls are my friends and I don't really want to paint anyone that's not in my life because I spend so much time painting that I develop this relationship with my work. And if I'm painting somebody that I really don't know, it really means nothing to me. I can't really th seem to figure out the importance of the actions. Like why am I sitting in front of this figure for 500 hours painting all the eyelashes and making her the most beautiful woman in my life right now and I don't even know your name. Or maybe, I, you're, maybe you're a model that I hired off a website and you're really, really good at your job, but that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a friend. I'm looking for a snippet into my life where she knows me and I know her. And the reason I paint women is because I'm a woman. Like, I look at my body every single day, and we all tell stories that we know. Noname, my heart, is a very special piece for me. Um, you might not think anything chicken, but it is about my chicken. And I'd like the piece to be able to touch the boundaries of love, of I like the piece to be able to touch the boundaries of losing a loved one. Um, I lost a pet chicken recently and I couldn't stop thinking about her last gaze. Like the moment where you see into a living creature's eyes and knowing later after she has passed away that she was as asking for help and you didn't know anything about whether she was asking for help, or hungry, or just having a good time. Um, we were two creatures just unable to communicate with words. And I should tell myself that there was really no way of me knowing that she was not in a good situation. But still, I was really heavy with guilt, but really selfishly, I was just missing her. I just wanted to see her again. And I wanted to relive that moment, even if it was really hard for me. I painted her eyes into the subject matter's eyes, and I wanted to recreate the gaze that I remembered. And it was a heartbreaking experience because you know now that the way that she was looking at you were, were just ridden with all sorts of emotions because you were about to leave this body. And it's something that I never want to experience again, but. My love towards her is melted into the piece and it's with a big apology. Drawing of Lauren Y.S. Um, is titled Cuttlefish because I think she's a little cuttlefish. She's great, I love her. Mm. That drawing came about maybe not long after I got to know her and I really loved her energy and really appreciated the support and loving words that she brought to the table. And I really was doing a lot of secret loving on just the way she was. I was really adoring her as a person. I still do, I love her. I, no, nothing has changed, it's not like I don't like her anymore. <laughs> and she came over to the studio and I wanted to initially create this portrait of her with all these oyster mushrooms growing from her. And when I was working on this, again, a graphite painting that I like to call it, I realized just 
how great she was to draw. I mean, she was so much fun to draw. Like every single thing about her face, about the way she was, like it was almost like having a puzzle just laid out in front of you. And I never get to experience that often, but you never can ex uh, expect it either. You think a person's gonna be easy to draw and they're the hardest person to draw. And she looked like a really hard person to draw, which I, I really love challenges as far as drawing because I think it really makes me concentrate everything that I know into creating a beautiful blueprint that I can use for another painted piece. And when I was drawing her, it was just like fireworks after fireworks. It was just really fun. Um, and I think, I, I, I want to humbly say it embodies her very well. <laughs> and when I look at the drawing, I'm like, oh, that's, that's Lolo. I, I, I think that's Lolo. And I definitely loved that. I didn't recognize her low key flicking off hand as I was drawing it. Um, I really wanted to make that piece something that I can go back to and embellish later. As in, I wanted to do bigger pieces. That's not a painting, but something that involves a lot of resin and different embedding of flowers. And I am very excited about where that piece is gonna go, maybe in a couple months, I think I'll have an idea for it. But as of now, we just have the, we just have the drawing. Um, she, I think, is a force of nature. And compared to my other drawings, it's not any less rendered. But I, just like I said before, I was having a really good time paint, um, drawing her. The whole piece sort of has the thoughts and experiences of myself just relieving my stress. I mean, I was having a really good time just getting the pencil onto the paper and then getting the drawing done. And then when it was done, it felt like everything was right. I wasn't trying to fix that little eyelash or whatever little node that was giving me problems. I mean, everything just made sense and I really appreciate that I was able to experience it because it comes in very rare cases for me. So my drawings um, are not just a preparation for a painted piece. Some of my rendered pieces I really like calling them graphite paintings because they really are of their own. The drawings being drawings, they do spring towards the deeper, thicker idea where I can actually take it into a canvas and make it a second version of them as a painted piece. And you know, if somebody was to cut my painting in half with like a really sharp knife, if you look at it really closely, it will look like a tiny piece of cake cut in half because there's so many layers and layers and layers. And it doesn't come from me making mistakes. It's because I love the quality that it gives. I'm not painting simply just opaque colors on top of each other. There's many glazes. I really love the process of using a really rough hog bristle brush, pushing all sorts of paint pigment around straight from the tube. And when that dries, I'll tint a little bottle of resin into a color that I want and then pour it over. So it sort of looks like water getting into the grooves of the valley. So when that whole thing dries and then you sand the top part, you are left with all these marbled look that is not made from marbling. There are so many ways to manipulate the medium because it's very forgiving. And I not only manipulate them when they're wet, I really love it when I can cut into them, scrape them, scar them, and put Put push pigment into the scar so it looks actually like a scar where it's bleeding out of it and you can see them all around my work because I am pretty rough with my work I don't really baby them they're okay on their own <laughs>